Now we are delighted to welcome back amongst <coughs> us our good brother, uh, Mr. Noel Stevenson. Noel, you're very welcome here. We're glad you're home uh, with your wife and family for this Christmas time. Uh, Reverend Barnes phoned me some month ago and to see if we can have our brother Noel um, sometime between December <coughs> and uh, the beginning of January. And I told him, I said, well, there's only one date and that will be the last Sunday night of the year. And he said, well, that's great. And we're delighted that Noel is here. And we're going to ask him now to come and give a word of personal testimony, tell us how he was redeemed, and then tell about the work that God has taken him to in the land of the Philippines. God bless you. Thank you very much. I, I need to talk very fast tonight, for your, your minister has to preach as well. Uh, I was brought up in, in the, 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 church, um, the church hall, as we know it, on the Ravenhill Road. Uh, uh, I would have been carried round uh, in my mother's arms and then uh, sent along to Sunday school uh, there and be taught the Word of God, be learn the verses and know how to be saved. And then uh, come pass through uh, the Sunday school. Uh, Bob Gunning, he was our superintendent uh, there and uh, finished up in Bob's class uh, and then uh, left school, uh, got uh, too big for Sunday school and uh, got away there for a while uh, from uh, the atmosphere of Sunday school. Uh, but the law of uh, the Medes and Persians was you make sure you go to church on Sunday night. <laughs> Now, there was only one man that I liked to listen to, and that was Dr. Paisley, because uh, uh, of his interesting type of preaching. <laughs> and so uh, that's where we went every Sunday night there uh, to hear the Word of God. Uh, just one gallery there, so we would be sitting up in the gallery, and, and those appeals, uh, put your hand up and come down, and and sweating and doing this and, and just wanting to get out of the meeting uh, many a Sunday night, which we did. But then one night, one Sunday night, uh, there were lads beside us and they were Christian lads and they said, Noel, will you stay for the fellowship tonight? And that was on the 4th of November, 1962. Just a remark, an invitation, and I said yes. And so... Uh, Afterward, Jordan Kahn, the, the Reverend Jordan Kahn, uh, I think this was his first time uh, introduced to the churches, and he, he had been the preacher that night. Uh, Dr. Paisley had away somewhere else preaching. So uh, I'm now in amongst a group of young people. There may have been 15 there, and uh, I feel very uncomfortable. Uh, they're singing choruses and and I really seem to be enjoying it, and I'm wondering, what am I doing here? <laughs> you see, uh, uh, felt very uncomfortable in that meeting uh, that night, and so uh, uh, I went to William <coughs> Bammer, and I think most of us know William. Uh, he was the leader uh, in, in the fellowship, and I said, could I, could I talk to the minister? Uh, so William took us up to the, the, the old manse, uh, Beersbridge Road, and, and Mrs. Paisley brought us in, uh, sit down there. Uh, Dr. Paisley will be in in a minute. So it felt like a couple of hours, <laughs> but it was always going to be a minute, <laughs> you see. So uh, she would have put her head in, son. He'll be here. He's coming now. <laughs> He's coming now. Uh, and so... Uh, wait, 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 and it might have been half eleven Sunday night, the 4th of November, 1962, uh, that night, and then he comes, and of course there's someone wanting to talk to him about the Lord, and in a very simple manner, he takes two cups there, and he takes one cup, and he says, no, that's the cup of your sin, and, and he puts it on top of the other cup, and he says, Jesus took your sin at the place called Calvary, and you need to be saved. So uh, I say to him, well, uh, I, I don't feel like crying. That was a problem to me. I don't feel like crying because I had heard uh, reports of him 
when he came back from missions about people crying out for salvation as he preached the word of the Lord. And uh, I had heard these reports, so uh, I thought I would need to cry. And he says, no, uh, uh, the Bible doesn't say whosoever feels like crying shall be saved. The Bible says whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that was uh, uh, that was that wee problem dealt with, and then uh, I remember getting up and and saying, "Tell him, uh, would you pray for me?" And I thought that this was uh, a way out now. As <laughs> you're getting out of here now, <laughs> you say. So I thought that this would be a nice way to get out. Would you pray for me? So he says, uh, "Do you not think it's time you prayed for yourself?" It's either yes or no. Isn't it, really? I always thought that he was a good fisherman, you see. Uh, and he had a fish that night, and he wasn't going to let it out of the net. Amen. <laughs> so uh, uh, I said, yes, yes. And so, okay, uh, down on her knees now in the kitchen. So I look at him, and I say, do you know that I'm bad? He says, I know you're bad. Everybody's bad. <laughs> but we need to be saved. So uh, that was another problem dealt with. And then uh, he, he says, no, just just ask the Lord Jesus to save you. <laughs> He's, uh, and so, uh, uh, well, uh, we had said many prayers, but uh, uh, right then and there, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> This was going to be a prayer for salvation. You Sunday school teachers, are you listening, children's workers? I had been taught many, many years ago as a child, into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into day, come into stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And that flashed into my mind, and it just blurted it out, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And uh, nothing strange, nothing, no feelings, nothing like that. Uh, but Jesus came in. Amen. <laughs> he came in. It was a simple matter of asking him in. Yeah. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if you open the door of your heart, uh, the Lord says, I'll come in. It's a simple matter of him coming in. Praise the Lord. And so that night I got saved, shakes my hand and tells me to come to the services I'm going down the road. Uh, uh, I say to Big William, uh, maybe midnight now, I need to tell my mate I'm saved. Uh, my mate, he was my drinking partner. Friday night, Saturday night, gambling. Uh, go out, uh, football, then put a gamble down, bet on the dogs or, or, or bet on the horses and, and some football. Never won anything, bro. Always sure. lost. Aye. Devil's game. Aye. <laughs> Never won anything. Uh, but but however, um, get him out of bed. As my, he's, he's in bed. Oh, and Robert comes downstairs. There he lived in Rodner Street, off the Woodstock Road. And I remember uh, saying to him, Robert, I've got saved tonight. The drinking goes, the dancing goes. That was the fiesta down in Cromie Street. Wouldn't get into it now. <laughs> but however, you were able. The Linfield supporters took it over every Saturday night, brother, uh, down in Crummy Street there. So the dancing goes and uh, the football goes, everything goes tonight, Robert. And he's standing there very embarrassed, <laughs> and, and, and he says, oh, I thought that would happen to you, <laughs> you see. <laughs> and, 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 and it did happen. And, and the unfortunate thing is, uh, Robert... He, he went to prison for 12 years and Noel went to the pulpit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Aye. It was big choices and at that time we didn't really understand what was happening really. And then uh, we, we lived on the Woodstock Road at this time. So uh, I should tell my parents I got saved, shouldn't I? And big Billy, if you know him, yes. <laughs> you see? So uh, up the stairs, open the bedroom door. Dad, I've got saved tonight. I shouted hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so, say amen. 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 <laughs> when I'm preaching in, in the Philippines, uh, I, I, I see them there. I'm preaching in English and, and they, they, they know English. So uh, 
uh, I would I would just say say amen. Everybody says amen. I know they understand me then. Uh, but however, uh, I got saved and Monday night came round to a teaching meeting uh, that was going on then. And the first Christian fella I met there was the Reverend Stanley Barnes. And, and he was getting ready to go to some college, uh, whack, I think it was whack, there. Uh, and Stanley befriended me, the Reverend Barnes befriended me. Uh, and and then, uh, then he went off into the mission work there. Uh, but, well, okay, what do you do after salvation? Well, I went back to Sunday school. Morris, you would know Morris, uh, Dr. McElveen, Morris, now, now dead, him and another lad, and we, our class was in under the stair. This was the old church there, and, and Mr. Gunning, he taught the three of us there. Back to Sunday school. And so then... Uh, uh, on that Friday night prayer meeting, uh, there, uh, they made more noise in Windsor Park than <laughs> in our Peyton Church. And I really wonder where you were. But however, this particular Friday night, William Bummer, he's, he's talking to me, says, No, uh, they want you to become a Sunday school teacher. So I say, No. Why? I can't do it. How do you know you can't do it? Did you ever try it? No, but I know I can't do it. And this went on. This went on till it was daylight on Saturday morning. I needed to go to work, so I said, I'll, I'll give it a shot anyway. <laughs> and that's how we became a Sunday school teacher uh, those very many, many years ago. Yeah, I remember uh, sitting one particular night uh, uh, Dr. Woods was home. I, I, I think it might be his first furlough there. And uh, of course, the place packed with people and the, and the, the atmosphere electric. And uh, he gives the challenge to mission work. I wanted, I wanted, I felt, I felt I should just stand up and shout out, it's me. But I didn't. I didn't. Uh huh. Uh huh. At the door, he shakes my hand. He doesn't know me. I don't know him. He shakes my hand. And he says, what about it, young man? Uh -huh. And I know this. Every step up the Raven Hill Road was taking me further and further away from the night God dealt with me and spoke to me in that meeting many years ago. However, uh, we got involved in the work and then the call came to go into, into the work the full time. I remember Dr. Paisley banging the pulpit and, and saying this church needs a full time children's worker. And so now, uh, after years of teaching, uh, this was going to be another step forward. And I thought, uh, I thought I should answer this call. So I go home to Marie. I say, Marie, uh, I think uh, I should answer this call, but I need to talk to you. Uh, it, it's, it's to go full time into the ministry uh, there as a children's evangelist, if you want to call it that, <laughs> a children's evangelist. And so uh, uh, she says, Noah, if you think it's the call of God uh, and God speaking, you go. Now, we were living in Ardenley Avenue at the time. There's four kids there. But however, uh, I used to stand at the machine, the big, big tape lathe machine, and, and say to myself, have I to die at this machine, Lord? Is this all that I have to do for you? Uh, go down the back of it, try to hear the, 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 my, my eyes, uh, come back, set yourself and continue working there. The Lord was working in the heart. Uh, so uh, maybe somebody... <laughs> uh, Worried about the call of God, interested in the call of God. Once that call went out from the platform, I, I now need to see my minister. But I check him out and for six weeks. I check him out, and and then uh, I'm I'm saying to Marie, I'll see him tonight. I'll see him tonight. I'll see him tonight. But I didn't see him tonight because I was checking him out. That's that's the whole thing. Uh, 
But then, this Wednesday night, I'm going to see him tonight. <laughs> and uh, uh, what did he preach on? He preached on Moses standing still and God saying, go forward. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I'm going forward tonight. Uh, and the uh, first words was, uh, is, is the wife for this? <laughs> need to keep the wife right and all right. <laughs> and then the next one was, you're going to go into the college. But there was no college. <laughs> the Whitfield. And I thought, right, okay, <laughs> you're heading for the Whitfield. So it was all planned in Dr. Paisley's head, but it wasn't there yet. <laughs> so we, we spent a, wee, a year, a full year, roaming about the streets in Belfast. And then we went into the Bible College. And, and, and you know the dates and stuff. I'm not very good at keeping there. I know the day that got saved, the 4th of November, 1962. Amen. And then, uh, maybe 25 years, uh, I feel that uh, I have sort of climaxed in the work. That was deep, deep down in my soul. Uh, I, I felt that uh, uh, the work's terminated here. My work in Belfast. I had been out... Of course, I went out to the Philippines, met people that never heard the word of the Lord, didn't know the way of salvation. It's, it's mainly Catholic people uh, there and some Muslims as well. But however, uh, the, the, the desire grew and grew. You would have talked to Mr. McElfine, he was my boss at that time. <laughs> and uh, he talked to me and talked to Dr. Paisley, talk, 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 and things like that, and trying to find out uh, the will of God. This was going to be the major step now. This was going to, uh, uh, this was major in our hearts and our lives. Talk, talk to Marie about the work, and she says, If you're not going to go, don't talk any more to me about it. <laughs> so uh, there was a lot of talk and a lot of prayer went into it. But however, we got out there, uh, as you know, and then. Uh, in in that little Baptist church, sleeping there, living there, we move out, taking meetings here, there, and yonder. Uh, uh, so uh, then, uh, in one time, uh, we're 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 going down by the the squatter area. The voice says in the back of the wee van, uh, "Would you go into my street? So where it where is your street? Go down here. Go down there." And we're into the muck and gutters, and you know what that is there. And uh, the garbage. They put four feet of garbage in it, they threw a, uh, a, a drop of soil on it like this, and they think that's it dead on. Then the typhoons and rain and all washes it all away, and you're walking about now, bin bags and everything. Uh, uh, but however, uh, for me, it's a place to be. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, so we, we move into that area. A woman says, uh, would you start a Sunday school in my house? Where is your house? Follow me. And we followed her uh, and uh, just a wee shack. But we started, she was a Christian woman. Imagine. Uh, and she wanted a Sunday school. The Sunday school blossomed into maybe 70, 80, 90 sometimes just sitting in the, uh, 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 on, in the clay there. But however... Uh, when I look back on it all now, I'm looking here uh, at Genesis uh, and it's Eliezer, the, the old servant of Abraham, and he said, Unto them hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way. And when we look back on it, we, we, we can just sit back and say, The Lord hath prospered my way. <laughs> For no one else could have done it. Amen. And, and uh, it's the Lord's doing and it's marvellous in our eyes. We went into that squatter area uh, uh, with, no, there's nothing there, only the garbage and, uh, and people there. Uh, start a Sunday school and I need to run quick here down what is happening, uh, what is happening now. Uh, we have six Sunday schools going now. Uh, uh, the one in the, in the main church building, and then uh, out, out what we would call outreach Sunday schools, another five of them out there. Uh, we, we're working with approximately 300 children uh, on a Sunday morning. A Sunday school starts at 8 a.m., and so uh, out to go. Uh, mainly nice 
sunny weather uh, and, and sometimes uh, it can be uh, different types of weather there but however uh, in, in mission times we'll have 500 children we'll walk around the area uh, there this is a hundred percent Catholic area but we have the freedom and the liberty to do this uh, and, uh, and have your your verses there and the wee ones first and then coming up to the big of teenagers and we'll all walk around the area and everybody looking at you. They know us anyway. Ring a bell. The bell's still ringing. Amen. <laughs> Are you with me? Uh, if you ring a bell over there, everybody comes at you looking for ice cream. <laughs> you see? But we still have a bell ringing for the Lord out there. Amen. The first bell I got was from Dr. Paisley too. Uh, uh, a broke it. <laughs> it fell apart on me, beating it. And then and Miss Dennis and uh, Dr. McElfine, she, we were praying for bells in the Friday night prayer meeting. <laughs> and Lord, you know there's bells sitting and there's dust sitting on them and they're doing nothing. And they never ring. And Miss Dennis, she says, no, I have heard that you have been asking the Lord to turn up bells. <laughs> And I have a bell, and I'll give you my bell. And, and our sister lived round the corner, and, and she gave me two bells. <laughs> I'm telling you, they used to call me Santa Claus in the middle of July, <laughs> and Sandy Row. <laughs> but however, that's what's happening anyway. Junior fellowship uh, would be the Sunday school class, my Sunday school class, 10 to 14 year olds. We can have 40 to 60 young people. In there every Sunday morning in the kitchen area. Uh, there, uh, who's the teachers to these children? Uh, they were one time juniors and they got saved. They're now seniors. We we teach them the word of the Lord. They stayed with us, and now they say, "Can we go out uh, as Sunday school teachers?" We call, we say, "And among the sticks, Amen." And we and uh, what the Lord did here, He's doing out there, Amen. Ah, it's marvelous. And uh, we we have Bible study prayer meeting seven o'clock, mothers meeting one uh, uh, Wednesday night, uh, mothers meetings one <coughs> Thursday there. That's on a Thursday, one thirty, three thirty. Uh, we give them a couple of kilos of rice to keep the mothers happy. Maybe fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Mothers, uh, every every uh, Thursday, and have good fellowship with them. Bible study at a.m. every morning. Big Chris comes in. He's a German, and and uh, uh, Chris was uh, this was a live in with the Filipino woman, and uh, <clears throat> uh, used to meet him. He walked his Alsatian dog. I walked my pet bull, <laughs> and so. We would never let them fight, of course, but they, they, they wanted to sniff at each other. You say, Chris, you come to a church there. Uh, uh, he's a big European. You would know that smoking away. He's not going to go to church. No interest in church. Uh, so uh, we meet him on a regular basis as we girl because of a, a, of a, a, a sinful past. One of these children, uh, <coughs> traumatized, will not speak. She will not talk at all, this child. No words out of her at all. So, Chris, you should get that child into the school. Mix her with other children her, her, her own age and, and mix her. That's what you should do. And you, if, you, if, you're, if you're worried about her getting snatched, you can sit in the classroom or sit outside, but you get that child into the classroom, which he did. And the wee girl is now, she could quote you the Lord's my shepherd, amen. <laughs> and she's coming on okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, my big Chris, uh, he, he started to attend the church. His big dog died. And we, we heard you would get rid of this now. Just can't dig a hole and bury it, you know, the smell and everything. But anyway, we got rid of it for him there. And, and the Lord touched his heart and he came in. And the second row and he sat like at his knee. Just as like this, he just stared at you and intimidated you. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> and boy, he was so good. And a big Lutheran brother from Germany knew nothing about the Word of God, of course. Dead as Hector. And uh, uh, and then, this would be too easily two years ago, we're coming home uh, again. And he says, I want to talk to you, Noah. What do you have to do to join your church? 
I told him, you'd need to join God's church first. Amen. Say amen. amen. <laughs> and as I would talk to him. I never pressured him. Uh, that's the way we left. Big talk with him about salvation. Away we go back home. Came back again. Chris had got saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I've been in the way. The Lord has prospered us. Amen. And then, and then, uh, 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 boy, he studies his, his brother as a, a doctor, a medical doctor in Germany. So I look at Chris, I say, you're no monkey. You, you have some brains in there as well. And he comes with awkward questions, you say, <laughs> with me. <laughs> but thank God for Matthew Henry. <laughs> I, if I can't answer the question, I say to him, I'll need to see what Matthew says. <laughs> and go to Matthew, you probably know what I mean. Aye, we all do that, don't we? <laughs> hey, these old timers keep us on the right path, amen. <laughs> but but however, I say I say to him, Chris, you see if you ever go, I want to pump as much doctor in India as I can. <laughs> That's Calvin, that's the doctor in Broad. Uh, I want to pump as much of it in India as I can. You may be turn out to be a Luther in <laughs> Germany again. Uh, uh, I think we need another one back again. But however, that's what's happening. Brethren and sisters, uh, I want you to pray. It's on our heart for a new work. It's been there. I'm praying about it and, and, and preaching. Uh, we're, we're, not, we're not in <coughs> utopia yet. We're not, we're, there's more work to be done. So... Uh, a couple joined us there across the way. That's the, in another area that all runs into each other. Uh, so they joined up with us of a house over on the other side. They wanted Bible study on a Saturday night. They wanted a Sunday school started in their house on Sunday morning. So we go out and visit them and, uh, and spy out the land. And they have a piece of ground, maybe 30 square uh, meters there uh, beside them it's theirs uh, nothing in it stones down on it there and I'm saying uh, that would be ideal uh, to start a wee church there <laughs> you've got a piece of ground uh, and, and, and so that it's just space to hold people so I want you to pray that God starts a work there what he did in Lakeview is he not able to do over there <laughs> Amen now the Lord is able uh, praise the Lord! What what he is able to do it now? Uh, we would need uh, young fellas to take uh, the meetings and preach. And two boys uh, last year, uh, these two lads say, uh, Uncle Noah uh, would like to go to a Bible college. Uh, this is in Pasig City, which is close to us. It's only a cheap and twenty minutes away. Uh, gets them to the college. You could, it could take you two hours and you would never be through Manila. Manila, they reckon there's maybe 28 million people living in Manila uh, and it's a very, very congested place, so it is. <laughs> but however, uh, we're living on the perimeter of Pasig City, Manila, Metro Manila. Uh, but anyway, uh, they're, they're now going... Uh, and I asked him the Bible college I, I asked him uh, what did you learn today he said and, and, uh, and we, we, we teach them as well amen the good doctor <laughs> praise the Lord but however uh, another week girl I look at those two boys and I say to myself uh, am I looking at the two boys who are going to take over this work that's the way I look at them are you with me? No. The wind the clock back nine years. We're talking about a building. The door hits my door hits in the wee church there. Uncle Noel, birthday party, birthday party, half eleven at night. Where are you going? We're into the squatter area. It's Jenny's birthday party. I say you should be in your bed. No, 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 birthday party. You need to come, Uncle Noel. Okay, we go. Uh, I being in the way the Lord led us. Well, we turn into this squatter area again. Here's a body lying on the ground. He's drunk. He fell off the bed. He's lying sleeping now there. And we pick him up. And, and he apologizes for holding up traffic. And we go to whose house? His house. 
It's his sister's birthday. Amen. Are you with me? We'll ask him, come to church. Uh, he talks like every drunk man, load of nonsense. But however, he come to church. His wife come. The both of them get saved. Who is this man? He's the builder. Amen. The Lord saved the drunkard who's going to build a place. Praise the Lord. I look at the two boys, I say, Lord, are these two boys going to finish up preacher, man? That's the way I think. We Jamaica uh, went uh, four years now. Jamaica, a great, a great personality of a girl. And she says, Uncle Nola, I feel that the Lord wants us to go to a Bible college. Uh, Mr. McElveen, Pastor Dr. Keyson. I think you would, you would know that man, Dr. Keyson. So... Uh, we're thinking of a fundamental son, or a fundamental Bible college there. Uh, Dr. Keyson, I remember Dr. Paisley uh, announcing Dr. Keyson as a Philistine. <laughs> and everybody laughed, and he wondered why they were all laughing. <laughs> Philistine from the Philippines. <laughs> but however, uh, uh, have your moments too, you know. But... Uh, uh, she went there and she's been trained as a school teacher and also uh, Bible uh, stuff as well. Uh, she's going to come into the wee school. Well, the school started with, with a preschool, doubled up two rooms, two, two classrooms, mothers there. These are, these are Roman Catholic mothers. Uh, these mothers are saying, would you not start a wee school? Well, that was the challenge. Okay. Teacher family, you're the educationalist. I think I'm an evangelist. I do not know anything about education. Uh, we dropped out of school at 14, and you will understand no nothing about it. But you take it over. I will help you. Whatever you need, we will try and supply, uh, make tables, make chairs. Uh, we'll do that. And that's the way it operates with 120 in the school today. Praise the Lord. Imagine. And you have the opportunity to teach them the, the word of the Lord. And so I want you to pray. Pray for the, 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 just the continuation of the work. Uh, we read about Abraham. Abraham went out not knowing whithersoever he went. But he went anyway. Amen. And, and we, we will trace the, the hand that planned it all. Uh, and wonder at it all. Uh, and then say, Lord... Uh, uh, this is all marvellous in our eyes, for you've done it. Amen. I want to read a letter out, then I'll finish, brother. Uh, uh, this letter came from one of the Sunday school teachers, Sharon by name, Uncle Noel. We praise the triune God, for where on earth will we find the no facts and truths uh, but written in the Bible? The doctrines where we should stand of who we are and what we are not. I keep telling them, the day you think you are something when we're nothing, you're finished. <laughs> the day we think we are something when we're nothing, we're finished. So that's what she's hinting at there. Uh, uh, my own searching uh, uh, for the worldly ideas and knowledge couldn't replace the strength of your preaching. That puffs me up a wee bit. <laughs> Amen. I like that line. I'll read it again. <laughs> the, 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 the searching and the worldly ideas and knowledge couldn't replace the strength of your preaching. Amen. I personally am very thankful that you're the one who, who, who molds us uh, very secure in Bible truths, teaching, uh, doctrines. I, a filthy sinner, are you with me? We don't know if there's anybody in the meeting not saved in it. We don't know. This girl has been reared up in utter paganism. This wee girl. She lives in a shack or did live in a shack. Step outside. There's the garbage there. Water there. The place. Just islands. Islands of mosquitoes waiting for six o'clock at night to bite you. Uh, if you're walking about. There they are. And that, that was the environment. Her stepmother, uh, her adopted mother, she was adopted as a baby, this one, Sharon. Uh, 
So she sells bits of clothes to try and keep body and soul together. Uh -huh. This is Sharon. And she calls herself a filthy sinner, saved by God's amazing grace alone, in brackets. Amen. <laughs> so uh, uh, we stand at your back as you preach against false things. Thank you so much. See those false things? There's a man in the Philippines standing on a big platform. He has his television cameras sending it, this message into the UK, into America, into Europe, into Israel, and different other countries. He is the anointed Son of God. Uh -huh. Him. Father, Father, Father. You wonder at God giving him breath at all. But that's what happened. Filipino. Uh -huh. Another one. Hundred years ago, he decided uh, to start his own religion. It's called the Ecclesia, the Church of Ecclesia. Uh -huh. When Jesus comes back again, you need to be locked in that building, for the building will go up. Never hear the like of it. You are saved by being baptized by them. <coughs> it's all heresy and full of nonsense, but thousands believe in it. This is what this week is getting at. Uh, preaching against false things. Thank you so much. We praise the Lord for all his plans for you. Amen. And the Lakeview people, that's where we are. I just can't say it in person, so I write it down. Glory to God, Christ soldier, Sharon. Amen. You see that piece of paper? It's worth more than gold to me. It's worth more than a bucket of gold. Praise the Lord. I being in the way the Lord led us. Thank you very much uh, for your listening ear and for your patience. Thank you, brother. I thank you for giving, giving me the opportunity You're to bring well. that report. Thank you. Well, we do thank <coughs> you for that very clear uh, word of personal testimony and that update about the work that he's involved in in the land of the Philippines. Do remember him in prayer and do remember the uh, needs of the work, including...